Hi guys, in this video I want to show you a quick and easy way to split your raw data up into a training and a test data set. For obvious reasons you want to use your training data to train your model and your test data to test the performance of your model. Okay, but here I'm going to focus on taking a raw data set and splitting it up. Okay, and in the process we're going to randomize the data set as well. So let's start with something that we all have access to, a data frame like Iris, okay? You don't need to import Iris, you should have it with your base installation. Let's take a look at Iris really quick. Let's take a look at the first few uh, rows of the raw data and you're gonna see that we have, uh, you know, five variables. So I have columns, 150 rows. Here's a snapshot of the first six. You see here are the five columns. If this particular column seems of special interest to me because I'm starting to see a rep repeating label here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the entire data set here to show you the problem, which is pretty obvious with this data set. And that is that if you pay attention to this um, last column species, that things seem to be in order um, based on the species of the row. Okay, so how do we, um, so, well, let's back up a little. Uh, our goal was to split the data up into a test and training data set. So here's 150 rows. Where should we split it? You know, uh, rule of thumb, leave at least 10 to 15% for testing. But of course, there's no absolute rule for this. And as your data set gets bigger, you can be more flexible with, um, with this. But uh, let's say we want to leave about... <clears throat> 50 of these rows, 50 of these examples as uh, for, for testing purposes. So where do we make that slice? Do we, do we go ahead and uh, take row 100 and just uh, everything above this point, leave it for training and everything below this point, make it part of the test data? Well, that would solve the problem with the numbers uh, for test and training, but what you can already see that there's going to be a big problem and that is that our training data is going because of the the nature of this data set being ordered is going to only contain certain species uh, and it may exclude other ones in this case if we split out a hundred you saw we were completely going to eliminate um, virginica flowers examples from be even being seen by the training process. That's a big no-no. So one thing we want to do is before we do any of this slicing into training and test is to shuffle the data or randomize it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a bunch of random numbers. Uh, you, can, you can think of this as a, a sequence of steps. I'm going to do it separately. You could also wrap this all into one if once you get it down and you want to be more efficient about it. So I'm just going to call this um, H just because it's an intermediary step. What I'm going to generate is a bunch of random numbers uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. And how, uh, how many, when I say a bunch, very specifically, as many as rows or examples that I have. So here I have 150 examples. So I want 150 random numbers. Um, one way to do that and take the guesswork out of it is just use the n row function, which will actually count the number of rows. I hit enter here, and I have, R has generated for me 150 random numbers between 0 and 1. That's great. What do I need this for? Well, I need this because I'm going to use the order of these random numbers in order to reorder my raw data set, which we were just looking at before. This way, it's going to mix up the rows. It's I like to tell my students that it's kind of like you, you're starting to play, you want to play cards with your friends and you take the cards out of the, out of the box. It could be a brand new set of cards uh, or it could be a set of cards that you had uh, already lying around. Either way, you want to shuffle the deck of cards before you start dealing, no matter what game it is that you're playing, especially if it's a brand new set of cards where everything's in like a perfect order from the manufacturer or uh, 
if it's not a brand new set of cards, you still want to shuffle the deck. And it's the same kind of concept here. Before you deal, before we split into training and test, we want to shuffle. So this is what we're doing here. So this was step one. Step two is going to be to actually take these random numbers and use them to reorder uh, the rows of Iris. So let's create something called Iris R. And I'm adding that little R to the end of it because I don't want to overwrite Iris. I just want to keep Iris as it is, just in case I ever need to go back to it. So what Iris R is going to be, it's going to be Iris. But the rows of Iris are going to move around based on the order of this entity that we created above this guy, which we called H for whatever reason, just for simplicity. I don't want to do anything to the columns. The columns don't need to be moved around or eliminated or anything like this. All I need is for the rows to be moved around, reordered. That's why I put this there. Now I hit enter and I have Iris R. Let's very quickly take a look at Iris R. First off, we'll see that we have the same structure as Iris. If you remember, 150 rows, five columns. We'll take a look at Iris in its entirety, Iris R in its entirety, and we'll see, pay attention to that final column there, all the way to the right. You'll see that these guys are no longer in that obvious order that they were in uh, before we shuffled. So we've achieved kind of our uh, step one of, of our aim. Now, let me throw one more ripple into this uh, shuffling process, and that is, if you want reproducible work, and, uh, which means that you want work that you'll be able to come back to the next day or if you're working with a team of people they'll be able to come uh, jump in on and reproduce exactly the same results that you did and either go forward from there or just interpret what you've done you want to do one extra step from what we just did so this only applies if you want reproducible work it's not a bad idea to throw this in anyway and that step is before you do the random number generation this step that I'm showing you right here you want to do one more thing one thing before that and that is you want to set a seed and what this does is it'll make sure that the random numbers that you generate in the very next step are the same exact random numbers every single time so if you set this seed to let's say let's just pick an arbitrary number one two three and I pick the seed one, two, three, and then we perform that same exact step uh, we did earlier where we, where we ran uh, uh, a random number generation, you and I will get the same exact random numbers. Okay, so hit enter here, nothing different there, and in fact, nothing different on that final step as well. So the only thing that's different here from what I did on the first uh, take was I added a seed. And all that will do is reassure me that every time I do this, if I need to repeat this, I'll get the same exact results. It's kind of like you're shuffling a deck of cards exactly the same way by setting that seed. Okay, now we move forward. Now that we have solved the problem of shuffling this deck of cards, we're going to split this deck of cards, the raw data that is, into a training data set and a test data set. And we're going to do it like this. Um, so you can name this whatever you like, but let's for simplicity call the training data just train. And be careful, we're going to make sure we use Iris R. And let's say we want rows, we decided early on we're going to keep the first, well we're going to keep a hundred for training purposes. Okay, you don't need to put the space, it's just a good convention. Okay, and we want to use the rest of the data. If you remember there was 150 rows. So again, I'm basing this off of Iris R, which is the randomized or shuffled version of Iris. 101 to 150. Again, I'm not messing around with the columns. So take a look at what I did. I gave some pre-thought to this and I said I'm going to leave I'm going to use 100 f examples for training purposes and I'm going to use the rest for test purposes. Notice how the rest starts directly after the training. So I went up to 100 for tra training and I start testing at 101. 
all the way to the final example which in this case was 150 you have to give this some thought uh, or else these uh, these uh, you you will split the data but you might get overlapping parts you might exclude exa data which you don't want to do uh, data is not always easy to come by so you want to use all of it but you definitely don't want to overlap so you never want these indexes to overlap with these okay and if you just take very quickly take a quick look at this you'll see that the structure of these guys is almost identical to the original data except major difference is this right here what I'm circling the number of rows we've successfully shuffled and split the data into a test and training set from here forward you can you can apply any kind of uh, machine learning algorithm that you you like that's appropriate depending on what your aims are for this data set like a KNN or or cart or or whatever it might be but this is like the fundamental preparation before you jump into the training phase all right I hope this was helpful till next time be sure to subscribe like and share and check out over 500 videos on Jalea Academy. Have a great day.